All right, everyone, welcome back to another demonstration. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an electrode holder. And this is going to be the final result. This is what it's going to look like once you're done putting it together. And I've got some electrodes just kind of thrown in there to show you that we can actually use it as an electrode holder. Um, I've seen some people use this as a desk organizer, but pretty much once you make it and take it home, it's up to you whatever you want to use it for. And here's a still shot from the front view, just so that way you can get a better idea. And so before talking about all the material that you're going to be using, let's just start with the very first part. This is going to be the base of your electrode holder. So you're going to get a plate of steel, similar to the one that I have here. And we're going to have to take a look at the blueprint to make sure that we have, one, the right size piece of steel, and then two, we're going to have to cut it to match the specifications on our blueprint. We're going to have to take note of the shape of the base, as noted in the blueprint. And so we can take a look at that, and then we can see that the plate of material we have is obviously not in the right shape. So we're going to have to go around the sides, mark down our dimensions, and cut it to size. So if we take a closer look at our blueprint and we look at the, the front view down here on the bottom, you're going to notice that one side needs to be 10 inches long. You're going to see that one side needs to be 6 inches long. And then we've got these two sides that are cut at an angle. And those two sides from front to back of the plate are supposed to measure 8 and 3 quarters of an inch. So we're going to have a little bit of math to do with this project, but it's not a lot. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that my plate is the right size uh, before I even start laying out where my cuts are going to be. So that's what I'm doing right here. And so you can see here my plate is a little bit bigger than what it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this out so that way I can trim it off. And then I'm going to check the other side of the plate for the same thing. And so here I'm encountering a little bit of an issue. It looks like my square isn't actually square. So I'm going to have to take my tool, find out where my issue is stemming from, and then I'm going to have to mark out some lines to cut so I can remedy this issue. All right, then once that's done, I can go ahead and I can start measuring out from my eight and three quarters of an inch. And I'm just going to fill that space in with some X's so that way I know that that is the side that is going to get tossed out when I'm done cutting. And then here, I'm just going to mark out which sides are eight and three quarters. And that means that the last side is going to be the one I have to cut to six inches. So here's a simple way to figure out how to get it down to six inches and get those angled cuts on our sides. If we know that the plate is going to be 10 inches wide, we just need to find the middle point, which is five inches, and then draw a line straight down the center. So that pretty much gives us five inches on one side, five inches on the other, right? Well, if that side only needs to be six inches, we can go ahead and cut that in half and just measure out from that middle line three inches in each direction. So here I'm marking out three inches on either side of that center line right up on the edge. And then I'm just going to connect the dots and basically line up those three inch marks with the back corners. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and throw some X's on there just so that way it's kind of like a mental note that these are going to be the scrap pieces. And now we're ready to cut. And so here I'm using the oxygen acetylene cutting torch to cut my plate to shape. But this isn't the only option. You can also use the plasma cutter. Um, the choice is up to you. I prefer to use the cutting torch, so that's what I went with. And so cutting this plate to shape shouldn't take that much time. There's only three cuts that you need to make. And then once you're done cutting, be sure to let the material cool down before you take it over to a grinding station. And what I mean by let the material cool down is you should be able to carry this plate in your bare hands before you start grinding on it. And 
And then once you start grinding, make sure to clean up all your edges and then also take care of those sharp corners. And what you're seeing me doing with the ruler is I'm just checking my edge to make sure that it's completely straight, completely flat. That way I don't have any curves in my edge. And after we've cleaned up our steel plate, we can move on to cutting out the square two pieces for our electrode holder. So the piece of material I have is looking a little rough, so I need to find a flat side in order to measure using my square. And it turns out that the ends of my square tube aren't exactly square themselves, and I need to take care of that before I can lay out any measurements. So I'm going to lay out the ends of my square tubing, get those cut, and then I'm going to come back to actually measure out the lengths of our square tubing. Now I'm back after cutting off my ends. And if we take a look at the blueprint, we've got three pieces of square tubing to cut out. One at six inches, one at four, and one at two and a half. It doesn't matter which one you cut first, but I'm going to go from biggest to smallest. And here I'm using our big bandsaw just to show you that it's an option. Just remember we have two types of bandsaws in our shop and it's up to you on uh, which one you want to use to cut your pieces out with. Then I'm just back at my table measuring out the second piece of square tubing. And here I'm using the smaller bandsaw that we have in our shop. This was right after they replaced the blade, so of course I had to break it in. I had to use it and show you guys just how fast it cuts through the square tubing. And back to our table to measure off the third and last piece of square tubing. And back to the bandsaw to make our final cut. And now that we have all our pieces cut, it's very important that we get rid of all this rust. So let's go back to the grinding stations and clean them up.
Now that all our grinding and polishing is done, let's head back to our work table so we can go ahead and start laying out on our plate just where our square tubing pieces are gonna get welded to. So here I'm just using a paint marker to lay out the dimensions and I'm gonna come in with the scratch outs to actually etch in our line, our border line, for that first piece of square tubing to sit. I'm doing this to save myself time, that way I don't have to go back to the grinding station and remove any ink or paint that I used to draw the line with. And then once you get the backside done, go ahead and do the same thing for the front of the plate. Once you've done that, you want to get yourself a center line going down the middle of the plate so that way you can center that first piece of square tubing onto the base plate. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and play around with the fit up with all three of the square tube pieces. Make sure that they all fit onto the base plate as they should and according to specifications noted on the blueprint. This is pretty much your time to double check all your pieces, make sure that they were cut correctly and that they're square and they fit properly onto your, uh, onto your base plate. So if you need to do any changes at this point, go ahead and do so before tack welding them onto the base plate. Uh, but if everything looks good or if you have to make any changes after your changes have been made, go ahead and start fitting that first six inch piece of square tubing on the base plate. Make sure you get your spacing correct and then go ahead and tack weld it in place. This piece only really needs a couple tack welds and then after you do that go ahead and make sure that your square tubing piece is still square to the base plate. And once you've done that go ahead and take the other two pieces of square tubing, fit them on the base plate and get your spacing correct and then go ahead and start tacking them in place. Make sure that after tack welding each of the square tubing pieces onto the base plate that you check them for squareness just to make sure that they're good to go. Uh, if they're not, break the welds or break the tack welds and then reset them and then redo your tacks. So here you'll notice that right when I was tack welding that third piece, it kind of got away from me. It got it got shifted around. So here I have to grab my pliers and I have to break that tack weld and then reset it and redo my tack welds. And then once that's done, make sure that it's square. And in here I'm just showing you that your tack welds don't have to be huge. They just have to be enough to stick the square tubing pieces to the base plate, hold them in place so that way we can go ahead and do our welding. And so here I'm using GMAW to weld up my pieces. It's fast, it's efficient, uh, but it's not the only process you can use. You can use GTAW, you can use SMAW. Uh, depending on the wire diameter you can also use FCAW, but if you're thinking about using 232, you probably shouldn't use FCAW. And I'm cutting it short for the welding visuals because with the settings on my camera, I wasn't able to capture a good shot. So it's just a bright light and we can just move on from this. You get the gist of it. You weld all your pieces to the base plate. And once you're done welding, go ahead and chip off any slag, depending on the welding process you used. And be sure to brush uh, the welds the best that you can. These are my welds going all the way around the square tubing pieces. But these two corners still have a little bit of residue. So I'm just going to take this whole piece back to the grinding station, slap a wire disc on an angle grinder, and just clean everything up the best that I can. I really wasn't able to get into these two corners with the wire disc, so I'm just going to have to get in here with the smaller wire brush and hope that I can brush out the rest of the residue. 
And once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and take a hand file and get some of these uh, sharp corners that are on the inside of the square tubing just to make sure that they don't cut my fingers or they don't scrape against any electrodes that I plan on keeping in here in the future. And then once that's done, it's ready to be used.